Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you all doing? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, welcome to my uh, presentation here. I'd first, I'd uh, like to uh, introduce myself. I wrote it down, my name is Captain Fred Everson. Two reasons. Well, the first one is so I won't forget myself. We all get older, you know. And the second one, uh, because uh, in the US they always like to spell my name uh, S-O-N on the end instead of S-E-N. So that's a little peeve I have. So I thought I would write it down. Number 6052. Her keel was laid on uh, June 29, 1998. And um, uh, she was commissioned on September 28, 2000. She was dedicated on October 30, 2000, by Mrs. Uh, Janet Lanteman, the wife of our former CEO, Mr. Kirk Lanteman. Her length is um, 238 uh, meters, 780 feet, uh, a width of uh, 106 feet, or 32 and a quarter meter, a draft of 8.1 meters, a gross tonnage of 62,735 tons, and a displacement of 33,961 tons. I will quiz you later in this uh, session about all these numbers. For, on voyage number 426, we have uh, 1,361 passengers on board, and we have a crew of uh, three, 593 crew members, and I hope you have enjoyed the service of our crew members so far. Thank you. Bridge tour and tell you some more aspects uh, of the operation on, on board the ship. But uh, the first question, of course, is because not everybody knows where is the bridge located? Well, on this ship, the bridge is located on navigation deck, deck number seven forward. And um, here you will see a little overview of the bridge with the various consoles we have. It's, uh, there are six in total. One is the maneuvering console, the second one is the navigation console. We have a communication console there, two wing consoles, and in the back a safety console from the port side and one taken from the starboard side. We'll go over the, uh, the various consoles and show you what's, what it is all about. The first one, uh, the maneuvering console. Actually, three parts, a propulsion part, steering part, and a navigation part. On the top left, you will see a repeater of our transverse electronic charge display. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, indicator panels for uh, how many engines we have online and how the propellers are working. Here, switch. I can uh, switch over to the various navigation modes we have. These levers here control the, uh, the speed of the ship, it's like throttles on your boat. The two levers here, they are the Asimon to operate our ASI propulsion system. I'll tell you more about that later. The handle here in the center controls the, uh, the bow thrusters of the ship, various indicators for the RPMs, uh, power use, and here also two emergency telegraphs. In case these handles don't work anymore, we can give orders to the engine room. It is uh, important for an engineer to know that if we put this one forward, that he knows that he has to put the ship in forward motion. Very important. If he does it the reverse way, we have an issue. <laughs> Power supply. And actually on this ship we have a third system. So in case all those two fail, we still have one electronic electronic chart display or system left. Uh, what do we have more on this uh, display on the side? Um, we have a depth finder, a sonar, and uh, three individual GPS receivers. Those are all fed into one system that determines the most accurate position and then dispenses it to the, our various uh, systems who needs a GPS or a position uh, signal. Uh, those days are gone as well. We now have an electronic uh, logbook 
uh, the big advantage of an electronic logbook is that I now can read what is written down. <laughs> my, uh, my own penmanship is not that great, so I can <coughs> not blame it on anybody else, but my own is not the greatest either. So, but at least uh, I can now read what is uh, being written. On the, uh, the right of that panel, here you see the two uh, separate uh, electronic chart systems. This is the, uh, the uh, semi-electronics one and this is the transverse system. They're both uh, quite similar. Uh, if I uh, show you the, the difference in charts, more or less the same little different color schemes. We had a, we had a beautiful day for sure. So that are the, uh, the two uh, screens there. Also here on the uh, oh, left hand side was a uh, panel for the uh, ship stabilizers, but I'll tell you more about that uh, later on in the presentation. Then uh, on the uh, port side, on the left hand side, we have the uh, communication uh, console, and uh, that consists of a uh, GMDSS station. GMDSS stands for Global Marine Distress Safety System. Uh, it consists of uh, HM and MF TELEX terminals, the various uh, um, VHF terminals, and they are there for verbal communication to Coast Guard and search and rescue stations. Ourselves have an emergency. This is the station where we can send out uh, our emergency broadcast. Also on the right here is a little uh, NAFTEX display. Uh, NAFTEX stands for uh, Navigational Telex, and this uh, system is used for direct delivery of navigation and weather warnings and forecast as well as urgent marine safety information. On the right hand side, some more, this is the, uh, the NAFTEC system here. Um, also some Immersat C terminals, so we can have direct communication. Uh, the one with the Red horn is uh, my direct line to the Seattle office, more or less. Um, I prefer a boring contract. As long as I don't hear that phone during my contract, that is okay. Especially also I don't want to use it during my contract because if I have to use them, that means then most likely something has hit the fan. <laughs> Try to avoid that kind of situations. Also, I never really received a nice phone call here. I'm still waiting for that phone call from my boss. He said he did such a great job. The bonus is on his way. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't happening. <laughs> but you never know. They still have opportunities to make that call. Um, also here, this uh, panel here, we can uh, drop the anchors from the bridge if needed in case of an emergency. <laughs> Furthermore, CCTV cameras for our mooring decks. And then if we move over to the side of the bridge, we go to the bridge wing. There's another button. Here we go. We have the two bridge wing consoles. Those are uh, used when docking and undocking the ship. So uh, yesterday when we left uh, Icy Strait Point, that's where we do it from. <laughs> but uh, the joystick uh, operates uh, all the propulsion and the bow thrusters and the steering of the ship. So how does it work? So yesterday we were alongside in, uh, in Icy Strait Point. We want to move away from the berth. We are there nicely docked. We let go our lines and then uh, just once the lines are gone. We lock it in. We say, hey, well, we like this heading. We keep this heading. Then I move this lever. Yesterday we were port side alongside, so we wanted to move away from the berth. I will move this handle sideways, and then you'll see the ship moving sideways. I locked in the heading, so the ship nicely keeps the heading and moves away. Alongside the ship, this is looking aft and here forward, so when we dock that we know how far we are off the berth, and we try to come alongside in a controlled fashion. Also, uh, you see here, there's a, a window. They made that especially for me, because uh, 
I like uh, to steer the ship like I steer my car. I like to uh, put my arm outside on a sunny day. <laughs> and I can steer with the other one. I can use the joystick. For that special occasion, I also put some uh, fussy dice down there. <laughs> I open my shirt a little bit with a gold chain. You know. Johnny Camaro there. Where we have uh, operated various safety systems on board the ship. Um, one part of it is uh, this panel over here uh, that operates the, uh, the ship's watertight doors. There are uh, 24 watertight doors on board the ship, which divides the ship in 17 watertight compartments. So we uh, try to avoid that kind of situation. It's important to know. <laughs> um, so uh, also on the, uh, the next panel here is the indicator panel for the fire screen doors. We can see if they are open or closed. Um, the ship is divided in six main fire zones uh, with fire bulkheads in between and they are there to uh, contain a fire from spreading out horizontally. And the next part of that console up here and up here is uh, the indication for uh, our uh, aqua mist uh, sprinkler system. Um, we have more or less the same uh, sprinkler system as uh, you will find in a uh, in an office building. The only difference here is uh, the the water pressure is slightly higher than you will find the uh, shore side. This uh, here is the uh, fire damper and ventilation control. You can uh, shut down uh, the ventilation and the fire dampers uh, per vertical zone uh, with this button there. Um, also here, on the right hand side is the uh, Salvico fire detection system. Uh, the ship is equipped with uh, over 3000 smoke, flame and heat detectors. Uh, that's the, uh, the control panel for that uh, system. Uh, CO2 you will find on all commercial ships. High fog you do not, but it is a, a great way to fight a fire. Uh, if you uh, have an, an, engine, an engine room fire, one way primarily what was used in the uh, former days was CO2. That means uh, you flood the, uh, the engine room with CO2 and that more or less renders your uh, engine room out of order. It will suppress the fire, but it will take a long time to do so. Uh, high fog, however, works different. It is a, a fine mist. I found a little video, a CCTV, of another cruise company where they uh, have a fire in the engine room. You can see already, uh, oh, there it is. They had a, uh, a burst fuel line which leaked oil on a uh, a hot engine and there's the, uh, the flames coming from uh, that fire. A high fog system on this ship was uh, manually operated, that's why it takes a few seconds. You can now see here uh, you know, that uh, the high fog is uh, in that engine room now, suppressing uh, the fire. Uh, under a minute this fire uh, was extinguished. Uh, but of course there are also uh, many more questions. One of course always is uh, how is the ship uh, powered? Well, the Amsterdam is, has a uh, diesel-electric power plant. A diesel uh, generator drives the generator which uh, generates the electrical power and compulsion for the ship. So that we have uh, five diesel engines, two 16 cylinders and uh, three 12 cylinder engines, the 16 cylinders are uh, close to uh, 16,000 horsepower, the 12 cylinders close to 12,000 horsepower. Total power available, close to 66,000 horsepower, our surface speed is around uh, 21 knots and the maximum speed is uh, 24 and a half knots. We see some uh, dimensions of uh, the cylinders of the engines, also a picture of the engine. And this is uh, 
the generating part of the engine. Um, we use uh, most of the time heavy fuel and sometimes uh, marine uh, gas oil. Uh, the uh, fuel consumption per day at the speed of uh, 21 knots we use about 140 metric tons of fuel. So that's close to 40,000 gallons. If you convert that all down, you'll see about 300 liters per mile or 90 gallons per mile. And uh, we move the ship 22 and a half yards per gallon. Just be uh, happy you don't have to pay the fuel bill. <laughs> uh, this cruise we uh, consume close to 950 metric tons of fuel. We fuel the ship uh, every two weeks. However, we have a, uh, a holding capacity of around uh, 3,300 metric tons. And if we would fill it up completely, sail the ship for uh, at 21 knots, we can sail continuously for around uh, 24 days before we are uh, empty. So we'll cover around 12,000 nautical miles. Set up with uh, propellers, shafts, rudders, and stern thrusters, the, uh, the Amsterdam is uh, equipped with acipods. What is an acipod and where is it located? So, in the back of the ship, and uh, you see some cutouts of uh, how a acipod looks like. Uh, acipod is uh, the brand name from uh, ABB's uh, podded azimuth thruster, and ABB is a, a large electrical equipment manufacturer. The Amsterdam is uh, Holland American Line's first acipod equipped ship. All Holland American ships built after the Amsterdam are all equipped with, uh, with acipods and that actually is nowadays the, uh, the industry standard. Sportsmen like Physique and myself is able to get in there. I, uh, I've been inside the, uh, the acipod but it was in uh, dry dock when they took the, uh, uh, the motor out. I thought it was roomier for me than to go in. Because if you look in that thing you don't want to go in. Uh, I can see. In uh, San Francisco, uh, we were just uh, ready to uh, put water back in the dry dock and go wet again. Uh, so the so the, uh, the pods they can uh, rotate 360 degrees. How does it work? Oh, I showed you on the bridge the uh, the two Asimon handles. This is one operates the port side of uh, the port. 360 degree rotation. Uh, there is also a uh, fast on mode and that doubles the speed. But uh, normal operation, normal circumstances, uh, it rotates at two, uh, two minutes and otherwise it will take a minute, approximately in a minute to, uh, to rotate it. Uh, what is the, uh, the big advantage of, uh, of RC pots? Well, first of all, uh, by uh, Avoiding the uh, traditional propeller shaft, the, um, the propeller can be further down in the water. Normally it's slightly higher. It is not much, but just enough to make it uh, advantageous. Uh, so uh, also the, the pot faces forward, as you can see, so the pot pulls the ship through the water. As you can see, there is an unobstructed flow towards the propeller which makes it uh, far more efficient. And actually when uh, we uh, maneuver the ship on joystick mode, this is the uh, position the ship uh, or the, the pots go in at first. So the one, uh, this one pulls the ship to port and this one pulls the ship to stern or the, the ship to the starboard. Here or maneuver the ship in port. Uh, where are they located here at the front of the ship? They are, uh, we have two of them, they are Kamewas, constant speed, hydraulically operated variable pitch propeller. Uh, the diameter of the uh, propeller is about uh, two and a half meters or close to eight feet. And do we use them? <laughs> the answer is yes and yes. We have them and we use them. Where are they located? located right in the center of the ship, just above the, uh, the keel. And if you uh, wonder if we uh, 
they make any difference, I can call the bridge and ask them to switch them off for a couple of minutes. <laughs> and then you let me know if they work, yes or no. Uh, but they, uh, they come out the ship uh, when we are alongside the dock, then uh, they are retracted. But once we start sailing, uh, we extend them. And they look like little wings of an aeroplane. How do they work? Oh, this is the inside uh, of the, uh, the stabilizer in the engine room. Here's the, this pocket, uh, this, this part here, it's right here. And the green part here is the uh, hydraulic uh, unit uh, to operate the, uh, the stabilizer. And I should now have a little. Here, the stabilizer comes out. You see the ship is uh, moving, and now the stabilizer starts working. So, what happens? You know, the ship uh, sails through the water, the water flows to the stabilizer, and it counters the rolling motion uh, of the ship. So, if the ship uh, rolls to starboard, the one comes up or it goes down. No, so the, here the ship is rolling to port. The, the water pushes the ship back to starboard. Uh, it uh, controls the rolling up to about uh, 90%. And as I said, uh, in the end, uh, when we go alongside, the uh, stabilizer will be housed. Hours actually come out the other way, but I can't find the video which has exactly the same stabilizer. Most of our uh, potable water ourselves. We generate uh, potable water from, uh, from seawater and we use uh, two methods for doing this. We either use the evaporators, evaporating seawater, or we use uh, reverse osmosis. Production of about uh, four, one is 400 cubic meters per uh, 24 hours, the other is uh, 600 cubic meters. 24 hours. Um, as I said, they are vacuum type evaporators. Uh, one works on the steam generated by one of the two ship's boilers. Moses, this is the unit we have, and that, uh, the production is about uh, 600 cubic meters per 24 hours. So, total 1600 cubic meters 24 hours. We have a storage capacity of around uh, 2200 uh, metric tons. Consumption on a uh, normal cruise is between 500 and 600 metric tons a day. Depends how many showers you take. Uh, normally ends up as either black or grey water. Uh, black water is the water from your toilets, and grey water is the water from sinks, bathtubs, showers, and the galleys. What do we do with that? Well, uh, uh, the water, f the black water is uh, collected in three collecting tanks. Well, you notice that we have a vacuum uh, system for our toilets. They go to, uh, to three separate uh, units and from there uh, the black water is uh, treated in the marine sanitation devices. Uh, treated and after it's been treated uh, it will be discharged into the ocean once we are uh, more than 12 miles from land and that all in accordance with US and international regulations. And then it's also discharged outside of uh, 12 nautical miles. The ship just below the waterline and the bulk modifies the way the water flows around the hull. Uh, and as such uh, reducing the drag and thus increasing the speed, range and fuel efficiency of the ship. And I don't know if there are any more Christian. All right, how about a big round of applause for Captain Fred Anderson? Thank you. And now it's the portion where you can ask uh, a question. We do have microphones. We have Hannah, our lovely uh, culinary arts center host right down here. We also have two of our uh, boys in black upstairs for any of those questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll try to get to you guys. There are three separate radars. Starting with the top, what, what does each radar do? They all uh, they are different wavelength radar. The large one is a 10 centimeter radar, and the smaller uh, uh, antenna you see is from a 3 centimeter radar. And it's, uh, they all show more or less the same picture, only the different wavelengths. Uh, one sees better, quote unquote, to rain than the other, but the 3 centimeter, it doesn't look 
well to ring as a better uh, definition of a picture. Too, too much, it's about 2%. Better or worse? Worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move a question to right upstairs there. Yes. Can you describe what the uh, pilot does with all of your wonderful equipment? What the pilot does? The uh, pilot is advisor to the captain, and uh, he's the man who should have the local knowledge of the area he, we are sailing in. So, and it's normally uh, most of the ports, it's a requirement, stipulation that you have a local pilot on board when entering or exiting a port. Morse code key, and similarly, do you have a sextant? When was the last time you used it, and can you do it again if you had to? No, yes, yes. <laughs> no on the Morse key, that's not in existence anymore, nowhere. The 500 kilohertz band is gone. Uh, sextant, we still have on board. Uh, we occasionally use it, but I always tell, normally it's done by the, uh, the cadets. All the ships uh, about the same size and the uh, fleet? Uh, no, we, uh, we have the, uh, the S-Class which is about 55,000 tons. This is what we call the R-Class, we have 62,000 tons. The, the Vista ships are uh, 85,000 tons. And then the Signature Class, the, the, the Eurodom and the, the New Amsterdam, uh, they are 95, I think. 95,000. Sonar display, um, is that for seeing the ice or, or no, this channels one, uh, when you're going into port? Uh, no, yeah, it was put on board for ice, but it doesn't really work that well for ice. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, we uh, more or less uh, used only as a uh, depth finder. How often does the ship is taken out? to be checked completely. In, in dry dock, every uh, five, we go twice every five years in dry dock. How many people are normally on the bridge at the same time? Uh, normally there are at least four normal conditions. Uh, a navigator and a co-navigator and uh, two quartermasters who will serve as lookout or steering the ship. And that will be increased depending uh, on the weather conditions, uh, traffic concentration, or getting in and out of port. And it can go up to uh, six or seven. The distance from uh, Endicott to uh, Juno is uh, uh, so short, it's only 46 some miles. We would have to have uh, all night uh, just cruising around uh, at slow speed to, uh, to wait until the next day when uh, a berth is available in, uh, in Juno. So that's why we anchored out. It gives you a nice view. As we were leaving Seattle, there was a boat pulled up alongside called Pilot Boat. What is the purpose of this pilot boat? The, the purpose was to take the pilot off the ship. <laughs> we had him uh, on board uh, for departure in uh, Seattle, and when we passed uh, Port Angeles, that is where the pilot station is. Little boat pulls up, the guy gets off, he say bye bye. Temperatures, humidity, and all that. And you've got the speed in knots, and then you have a, a Beaufort speed or a Beaufort number. Beaufort scale, yes. I was curious what that was. And uh, that's the wind speed. I think the only uh, in the U.S. they don't use uh, the Beaufort scale to, uh, to tell you what the wind speed is, but uh, in Europe, I think most of the world, uh, we use Beaufort instead of uh, miles per hour.